Syracuse stumbled in week one, a 12-9 loss to Colgate, and now looking to avoid their first 0-2 start since 1974. It's a tall task at hand, a top 15, and a final four team from a year ago. The Albany Great Danes invade the Carrier Dome. Hello and welcome to the Loud House. No Eagle, along with the legend and Hall of Famer Ryan Powell. Glad to have you with us for Syracuse and Albany, which was a year ago, a lopsided matchup. Albany took this one 15-3, thanks in large part to T.D. Erlin at the faceoff X. He won 16-21. of He's transferred. They don't have him this year. Yeah, T.D. Erlin was one of the best in the business in all of college lacrosse, um, you know, not only last year, but uh, all time. So a great faceoff guy. It's going to be interesting to see. they got a couple sophomores that they're going to put into that role and have them split the responsibilities. That's Anthony Altamari and Austin Jones. A couple of second-year players who have a great opportunity to seize the job, one of the premier programs in the country at this day and age. Syracuse last week struggled offensively against Colgate, only nine goals, but three of them came from Brendan Curry. Yeah, the bright spot was 16, Brendan Curry. This kid is a playmaker, unbelievable dodger from up top. He's super fast, got a great understanding of the game he's really come a long way from the 2018 season to where he is today curry had a hat trick for john desco in his 21st year at syracuse looking to avoid his first 0-2 start ever last time they started 0-1 was back in 2013 the team they lost to and the coach they lost to was scott marr and albany back in 2013 to start 0-1 and marr took his team all the way to the final four a year ago one of the better teams in the country ranked number one in the nation for a vast majority of the season as well. Syracuse doing whatever they can against a very talented Great Danes team today to avoid that 0-2 start. What's the key to a fast start if you're the Orange of John Desco? Well, I think that they got to come out and play with some serious emotion right now. Last week we talked to Coach before the game. He said that their players were extremely pumped up and ready to go from, for the, from the opening whistle. I didn't see it. You know, I saw kind of a group that was a little bit lackluster in the first quarter. They weren't grinding for ground balls. And in this game against Albany, you got to bring your best stuff and you got to come out right away and let the Danes know that you're here to play. And that's grinding and getting your nose dirty to get ground balls. Number one in purple is Dehoga Nanticoke. You'll be hearing that name a lot. He had quite a performance against Syracuse last year. Let's go to the faceoff X. Austin Jones and Danny Varello get us set for a top 20 matchup in Central New York. Syracuse and Albany underway. And Varello wins it outright. Great start for the Orange. And that was a big difference last year when you had T.D. Erland, who was the number one faceoff man in the country, the number one Fogo winning north of 70% of his tries. You knew you were getting possession, and Albany loves to play at a fast pace. Yeah, absolutely. Erlen gives it uh, gives you the opportunity. It's almost a make it, take it. The reference in basketball, you know, such a high level uh, faceoff percentage, just unbelievable at the X. Trimboli was quiet last week. Look to see who gets involved early on this week. Solomon had three goals, and we mentioned Curry had three goals. But other than that, production came elsewhere. Helmer had a goal. Kennedy had a goal. It wasn't the usual suspects offensively in that 12-9 loss to Colgate. And there's an early one. Jamie Trimboli starting out hot and Syracuse on the board quickly. This is exactly the start that Syracuse wants right here. Trimboli and Lipka both combined went one for 12 shooting last week against Colgate. He comes out, hits his mark on the first shot with an overhand high hard one to the low corner. I've talked about Trimboli's game quite a bit. His tendency is to shoot the ball high to high. I've been on him many times about shooting the ball overhand to the low corners. A perfect start, perfect play shot by Trimboli, big time goal. First goal of the season for Jamie Trimboli, the junior out of Victor, New York, who had 21 goals a year ago and exactly what Syracuse needed after a slow start a week ago against Colgate, a quick goal against one of the faster paced teams in the country in Albany. Varello and Jones stay out there for the faceoff, and this time Jones gets the better of Varello. There is Nantico with the ball in his cross. He is a load to handle, and we're wondering who are we gonna see on Dehoga Nantico today? Right now it's Tyson Bomberry, number 18 in white. Keep in mind, that was the matchup a year ago, and Nantico had five goals in his college lacrosse debut. The number one recruit in the country showed out in the Carrier Dome. 
Well, you got to come with some size on that matchup for sure, and Bomberry brings that. I can't think of another guy that you would want to throw on him right now just because of the size of number one. So Bomberry's very familiar with him. He's going to be fired up. He's, you know, no dummy. He knows that he got five scored on him last year, and he's going to come out ready to play today and hopefully do a much better job on number one, Nanako. There is Nanako, and this early shot was saved initially, and then it snuck through the net. Put one on the board for number one, and Nanako knocks this one up. Very crafty players, Nanakoke. He can catch the ball wherever the ball comes. And then he loves to shoot the ball. Shot the ball 15 times last year on the five goals that he scored. So a uh, box lacrosse player. He's used to catching and shooting from all different angles. And uh, he brings it with a lot of heat as well. That one wasn't extremely accurate. I would have liked to see Drake Porter uh, make that save right there. It would have been a big-time save. But, uh, you know, they need some big-time plays out here if they're going to be successful. I mean, look, he's six foot one, 248 pounds. So even if it's not on the mark, just the sheer strength of Dehoga Nantico is going to get it through more often than not. And that's what happened there. Violation against Varello, Albany wants to run. Here's that pace we talked about. When talking to Scott Marr, head coach of the Great Danes, ahead of this game, he said, we're not changing our mentality based on this new shot clock because we like to shoot within the first 15 seconds of the possession anyway. Nantico with a tough pass, retrieved by Ramirez for the Great Danes. Albany coming in at 15th in the country following that Final Four berth a year ago, losing to Yale 20-11 to in the national semifinals, the eventual national championship. Then they lose their face-off specialist, T.D. Erlin, who was number one in the country in face-off percentage a year ago, to that team in the Yale Bulldogs. So now let's see what Albany can cook up in 2019. One of the most anticipated years in Albany lacrosse. And here's goal number two. Just like that, Albany's on the board again. This one, another rocket out of Noah Taylor stick. Well, a nice draw and dump there. Syracuse got caught. They had a slide come out of the middle of the field. But this is just too easy. Syracuse defense got to communicate. Even the last goal by Nana Coke, you know, he's catching the ball 11 yards in front of the cage and has enough time to wind up and take a sidewinder shot. So. Uh, you know, a couple opportunities there. Syracuse defense got to do a better job communicating to make sure that they got the two and the three slide coming in that situation. Taylor's first goal of the year. He only had two in the entirety of last season, and that's something that Scott Moore said. We're going to have other people step up. We had a lot of people graduate, including Connor Fields, who is now second all-time in career points in Division One lacrosse. That's a tough player to replace. He said we're going to do it offensively by committee. That's a big face-off win for Syracuse. They just lost the previous two, which resulted in two very fast goals, but turn it over promptly. You know, you got all sorts of time and all sorts of room right there. You got to make sure that you do a good job clearing the ball. So, not a great play there by the senior Fusco for Syracuse. Got to protect the ball and make sure you clear in those opportunities. Antico just using the body against Fusco, works his way towards the crease and puts it in. Let's see what the call is here because, again, remember that new rule this year, the dive rule as you go into the crease. You're allowed to dive, but you can't be facing the goal as you do so. And let's see. And it's actually going to be a penalty called against Dehoga Nantico using the body. No go! No go! Number one in the blue. One blue, one minute. Unsportsmanlike, not full time. Release the ball, one minute. Let's take another look at this play by Dehoga Nantico. A tremendous individual effort against Austin Fusco. Keep in mind, Fusco stands at about 200 pounds. Nantico just bullies him inside and then topples Drake Porter, who falls on top of him. Yeah, honestly, I don't love the call. I mean, the rule is that you can't be going towards the goaltender. I know that he ended up taking him out there and uh, hit right near his feet, but he was facing away from the goalie and jumping out towards the top of the crease rather than at the goaltender's leg. So that's going to be a challenge all season long for the referees to get that call right. It's a judgment call. And, 
uh, you know, Syracuse is fortunate on that one to have a goal that's called their way. Trimboli already has a goal looking for his second. Syracuse backs up the shot from the junior. Keep in mind, Ryan, this was an area that Syracuse excelled in last week. Man up opportunities had several goals. Yeah, they went three for five last week, and, uh, you know, they generated shots on all five possessions. So. Just an uh, unbelievable job. I, I liked all their sets. Their ball movement was really good. Quick, sharp passes. So their man up unit is very good. Tromboli stays aggressive. Save made by Sikirski. Making his first start in net this season. And showing out early. A big stand by the Albany defense. And now they'll likely let this clock drain as much as they can. They need to get it across with a clear in the next five seconds. Or else they turn it back over and Sikirski does. Throw it away. Syracuse had it for a moment. And now they do. Bomberry picks it up. Here comes the Cuse the other way. Brendan Curry, a hat trick a week ago. Quick passing, and Voigt finds the back of the net. Assist to Brendan Curry, but Bradley Voigt knots it up at two. This is Syracuse lacrosse right here. Good job getting the loose ball in the defensive end. Good vision to get it to 16, Curry, and then Voigt. That's what he is here to do. He's got to be able to catch and finish. Last week he struggled burying the ball to the back of the net. It's good to see him and his first touch of today's game to stick one through the net miners five hole. First goal of his senior campaign, six foot two, 202 pounds out of Penyan, New York. So Ferrello and Jones stay out. When will we see or will we see Jacob Fott for Syracuse or Anthony Altamari for Albany? Both coaches says that they're very willing to use each one of their Fogos. Syracuse has this face off as well. They're winning that total three to two. Can they take the lead three to two as Kennedy races it up? Rafus underhand shot, sails wide. Voigt's there to back it up, but again, Shows you how important these face-offs are. The face-off X last year, Cole, or rather Albany was 16 for 21 with TD Erlin. So far today, Syracuse ahead three to two. Well, Varello's doing a good job. He's been winning the clamp right now, but he's missed a couple ground balls. So he's got to do a better job scooping up those ground balls. He's working so hard to get down and win the face-off, but he's got to start winning the face or winning the ground ball battle. Solomon. A little shimmy shake. Now he finds Jacob Buttermore, who we did not see last week against Colgate in the last regular season game of the year. A year ago against the Raiders, he had a hat trick. And with shot sails wide, Albany could not retrieve it first. Rafus does with 30 to shoot. Rafus working his way inside. Roll dodge. Rafus had his hands free, couldn't stick it. Syracuse keeps it. A whistle. And the shot clock did reset. As Lucas Quinn scooped up the ball. Syracuse seeking their first national title since 2009 and the first Final Four berth since 2013. If you're listening early on, they started that season 0 for 0 and 1. And that one loss was to Albany. 47 on the shot clock. They did not want the reset. So that's where Quinn will start it out for Syracuse. So if there's an optimistic way to look at this 0-1 start, the last time it happened, SU went to the Final Four. Syracuse aggressive early in this game, although Albany has made the most of their two chances. Here's another chance for the Orange, and a flag flies in late. Picked up by Syracuse, and it's going to go against the Orange. Griffin Cook forcing the issue. So actually, it goes against Albany. 
So man up again for Syracuse on the push from behind. Yeah, Coach Maher is hot right now for Albany because that's the same thing that just happened. His star attackment at the other end of the field, and he got a one-minute unsportsmanlike penalty for it. So Quinn tries to dive underneath. He hit the goaltender, and uh, he got away with it. And they got a push on number 15 from Albany, and here comes the high-powered Syracuse man-up unit. Hot potato on the perimeter. Voigt tried it again. It was saved and deflected before he even got to the net. 15 seconds left on the man up. Syracuse will have to work quickly to put one in. Rafus. Only thought about it. Voigt again. He tries again, and he succeeds again. Bradley Voigt with a quick start in this first quarter. Puts his team up by one. Syracuse up 3-2. Just being able to catch the ball, he's got great stick work, but what's so impressive on that particular shot right there is the placement. Off stick hip is the hardest place for a goaltender to make a save. He put it right in there beautifully. Big time goal by number one, Bradley Voigt. So number one has two, and SU's up by one. Scott Marr not happy with the call because it leads to that result. And just as Syracuse leads 3-2 to two in the faceoff, they lead 3-2 to two on the scoreboard as well. Varello and Jones have had a couple good battles early on in this game. It's been the great equalizer compared to last season's matchup between Albany and Syracuse. It looked like Jones had an easy win, and then Varello runs into a brick wall into Helga Nantikoek. After the fact, Albany will take this possession. But luckily for Syracuse, it was on a violation, which means that it has to slow down this offensive possession just a tad. Yeah, we'll see what Albany does here. They've uh, generated some good offense and good shots uh, each of their touches so far. So Syracuse has got to step up here. And their defense played a really sound game last week against Colgate. It was the offense that really struggled. So. Uh, you know, good shift right here by the defensive unit. Get a stop and get the ball back to your offense. Ron John, extra feed and a shot was wide left, backed up by Albany off of Burgmaster's stick. You got to look out for number 17 in purple as well. That's Jacob Patterson. He had four goals against Syracuse a year ago to go with Nanticoke's five. He's at the top of your screen, now shifting to the left. It's a one-goal game. Syracuse has come out with that energy that you hoped for, Ryan, especially on the offensive end, staying aggressive, outshooting Albany by a great deal. Easy save for Drake Porter, and Syracuse comes with, with away with a possession. Have to clear within 20 seconds in that new rule this season, and they do. Rafus has it. Owen Seabold, number 14 out of Texas. He's out there getting a run. Didn't see much of him last week. He looked sharp in the scrimmage against Yale. So Coach Tesco and his staff's going to give him an opportunity, along with number two that has the ball and just moved it along, Griffin Cook here out of Jamesville, New York. So a couple impact youngsters taking a shift out there on this offensive run. But it's going to be Tremboli in the experience who takes the aggressive shot, had it deflected away but Cook retrieves it. That's what John Desco loves about Griffin Cook. He never takes a possession off, never takes a second off. He's always grinding in the game. Boyd, who already has two goals, now Cook will try one for himself, but that was deflected off the midfielder, Alex Bergmaster, the sophomore from Auburn. 65 seconds on the shot clock for the Orange. John Desco looking to avoid his first ever 0-2 start of his career as Voigt flings one to the net looking for a hat-trick in the first quarter and Sikirski comes away with a save. In the John Desco era, Syracuse is very good coming off of a loss. 45-23 after losing a game under Coach Desco. In his tenure, they've only had 12 quote-unquote losing streaks, which is two or more losses in a row. So we're approaching somewhat of uncharted territory, especially to start a season, should SU go down in this one. Face-offs have gone 3-3 three three 
for each team. Here's Jack Bergmaster. Brothers to Alex on that midfield line. He's a captain this year, a leader. According to Scott Maury, he said that losing Connor Fields, that offensive weapon and vocal leader on the field, it's been other guys who have either been forced to step up or just change their style of play. The guy with the ball, Nanticoke, is one of them. He's been more vocal, but he gets doubled on his pursuit to the net. And when you have a target that large, they allow a little bit more contact. And it goes Syracuse's way. Well, it's going to stay with Albany. Push on Syracuse, Albany ball. Good defense right there. That's the way you got to play Nanako. You got to come with that slide. And you got to make sure that you go right into his body. Very well done by Syracuse in that situation. So Albany with another crack at it. Try to tie this one up. Whistle before the shot. Shot came from Taylor Noah, who had a goal earlier in the game. And the flag's on the field. Right 11. Technical foul. Interference. Push him into the crease. Technical interference. 30 seconds. So a man-up opportunity, courtesy of Austin Fusco, captain for Syracuse. He'll go to the box. Syracuse out shooting Albany 13 to 3 so far in this game out hustling them in, in a couple aspects, including ground balls as well. Nine to three advantage for the Orange. But a man up opportunity and a chance to tie this one up at three. Yeah, that's a bad penalty there. You're a senior captain like you just talked about, Fusco, and you know, off the ball, didn't have anything to do with the player pushing the guy in the back into the crease, and you got a three-two lead. So no when to take a risk. and and try to do something on the defensive end to send a message, but certainly not in that situation there. Another goal for Albany. Sean Eccles, the Syracuse native, playing in his final game possibly in the Carrier Dome. A senior puts it into the back of the net, and we're all tied up at three. Albany has come out firing. Syracuse has come out firing, and so far they're neck and neck through a, a large portion of this first quarter. It's 3-3 from the Dome. Here we go inside the Carrier Dome. Albany beats Syracuse 15-3, courtesy of Dehoga Nanticoke and his debut in college lacrosse. Five goals, but today he's been somewhat kept under wraps. Well, he got open here, a little laps on the Syracuse defense. You got the top Albany player right there in the middle of the field, like I said, from about 11 yards out. You got to get bodies on him. Big, strong player. This is the perfect example of the way that you want to play him. You stay on his body. He's a great stick handler. Look how long he maintained that ball. But Syracuse is battling for that Lucy. They ended up getting a little push. And uh, Albany got the ball back. But uh, perfect shutdown defense. And what you got to do against number one, you come with the extra support and a good slide package. I mean, look, he's got the moves on the field. But clearly, he got some dance moves as well. Dancing to up-down funk inside the dome. And it looks like we're going to see our first action of Jacob Fop today, who will go up against Austin Jones at the faceoff X. Nanticoke has some fun playing lacrosse, and how could you not if you score 50 goals and 32 assists in your first year in the Division I ranks? Well, he's at the perfect place to have fun and be extremely laid back and loose at all times. Coach Marr and his staff, you know, that's the way that they operate at Albany. They're very laid back and and uh, they always play loose and free-flowing and run and gun. It's an awesome style of play, and seems like he would be a great guy to play for. I actually had the opportunity to play for him in 2006 when I played for Team USA. He was an assistant, and John Desco was the head coach. You got a little bit of both, a little bit of each style in there when you were with Team USA back in 06. How do you think that Mars laid-back personality helps him as a lacrosse coach? Because it seems like these two styles, where you have a 21-year veteran in John Desco, a 19-year coaching veteran in Scott Marr, both work, but they're both very different. Yeah, you know, I think that it's a lot like that in a lot of different sports where there's different chemistries. And, you know, it, it seems to work for both of them, but uh, Coach Marr is definitely very laid-back. The team came out very loose. Laughing, smiling, throwing the ball up in the air. 
and uh, they're coming out here and playing playing a solid first quarter. Patterson, who's been scoreless so far, bounces one towards the crease. A lot of contact right outside. Nanticoke got decked. Just heard the collision anywhere inside the dome. Or rather, not Nanticoke, but a lot of contact on Corey Yunker, the freshman. So Syracuse now to clear it. Five seconds to do so. Had it across midfield, and now they officially do with David Lipka. Lipka had a goal and an assist against Colgate last week. Redshirt sophomore from Dorwood, Maryland, got the start. Good matchup right now is the guy that's got the ball, 12, Trimboli. Very tough cover for a short stick. That is going to be Solomon behind the cage over to Seabold. Seabold probing. Looking to make something happen. And finally realizes he doesn't have anything. 30 seconds to shoot. Syracuse without Tucker Dordovic, the sophomore who has been announced that he is out for the season with a foot injury that he re-aggravated early on in preseason action. Nice job by Curry to work his way inside but couldn't finish the deal. Syracuse with 16 to shoot. So no Dordovic means Lipka has more action. Lucas Quinn, Curry. Tend to shoot for the orange. Solomon. Solomon. Stick work impressive. And the goal is good. Syracuse back up one. Number three, Solomon is on my all grinder team. The guy is not afraid to take the ball into the middle of the field and absorb contact. And he's still talented enough to keep control of the ball. Get the defenseman away from him a bit and put the ball to the back of the net. The kid is a grinder. He'll go in there and do anything for the team to score goals, and that's what I love about his game. A hat trick last week. Solomon now with his fourth of the season, working towards that 22-goal performance in his junior campaign. Now a senior, trying to be one of those leaders for Syracuse. And here's a completely new matchup at the faceoff X. Anthony Altamari, his first crack at it against Jacob Fopp. And Fop wins it. A lot of contact on Jacob Fop. Looked like a flag hit the turf, and it did. Syracuse is going to get this possession. So Fop with two chances and two wins for the Orange, who already have a one-goal lead, a three face-off advantage in that category. You know, coaches are always going to be unhappy when the call doesn't go their way. I mean, I don't think there's uh, anything that Coach Marr didn't see there that would lead him to believe that that was not a push. It was directly right in the guy's back, and it should have been a flag. It was a good call by this officiating crew, and it gives the Syracuse man up team a, a nice opportunity here in the late stages of the first quarter. So Syracuse with another crack at the extra man. Solomon feet inside. Voigt looking for his third. Just missed it. You've got to come with an overhand shot right there. Every shot that he's taken so far today has been sidearm. That just made his angle so much worse in the middle of the field there by coming sidearm. Trimboli, Curry, now Rafis. Man up is released, so back to even strength between these two teams. Syracuse can hurry, and they can't even get a shot off. As Albany recovers, Bergmaster gets back into the play. Approaching a minute to play in the first quarter. An exciting first quarter between Syracuse and number 15, Albany. Curry with another shot. Sailed past the net. Rafus was there. Syracuse keeping, keeping two guys behind the cage right now as Rafus now works his way in front. 20 seconds to shoot for the Orange. Inside a minute to go. Rafus, who was a non-factor a week ago, found Voigt, but he couldn't handle it. Syracuse in a chaotic situation. Lipka ripped one high, but Sikirski saw it from the beginning. This continues to be a big issue for me and these midfielders shooting the ball. Too many shots go right to the goaltender's stick side, making for a very easy save. 
You're point blank in that situation. Bring your stick head up high and shoot to one of the low corners. Trimboli had success in his first goal today. I praised it. Then Trimboli shot one stick side high and a previous man up, and then we got Lipka shooting in that same place again. It's such an easy save for the goaltender. But what's a hard save for the goaltender is off hip, opposite stick side, or down to the low corners. Syracuse with a 4-3 lead. Two of those courtesy of Bradley Voigt. Trimboli had one, and Solomon had the last one to put his team up by one. Timeout called by Scott Maher. He's going to draw up one final play in the last 30 seconds of this first quarter. If you had a guess, Ryan, of where he's going, where would it be? Well, I mean, I think that you got to go with number one. The ball's got to go through him. I'd wait, you know, and get him the ball around 10 seconds. That's not the guy I would start the ball with, but I would have a play set up to get him the ball for sure. But uh, Albany's got some great options. Eccles is one of the top shooters in the country right now, 38. A Syracuse product, and he can really uh, put it in accurate, accurate places with some heat. So I really like his game as well. So one of those two options would be a great choice, but uh, you never know. When you were playing, and, and especially at the college ranks, uh, in a situation like this, final 30 seconds, you need a shot. What was the best way for a coach to draw a play to get your hands free and to get you free to get an open shot and find the back of the net? Well, I was never really like a catch-and-shoot guy myself, and I wouldn't say that that's Nana Coke's, like specialty either. He wants the ball on a stick driving and uses lower body as his strength, so it was more like a pick without the ball to get me the ball and let me drive from behind the cage. And, um, that would be something similar for Nanakoke as well. But it uh, looks like he is going to start with the ball. But I guess that uh, they're going to throw this around a little bit, and the ball will come back to him for a final drive around 10 seconds. Keep your eye on number 11, Corey Yunker, a freshman, and that was someone that Scott Barr had high praise for, said he can use both hands about as well as anybody on the team. He thinks he's got a great career ahead of him. Final 20 seconds of the first quarter between Syracuse and number 15, Albany. A game that was a 15-3 final score in favor of the Great Deans a year ago. Nanticoke is not involved yet in this possession. A shot from Bergmaster saved by Drake Porter. Syracuse is going to run with Kennedy. He had a goal in transition a week ago, but he drops this one before he can get it to the cage. And that's how this first quarter will come to a close. 0-1 Syracuse playing inspired in this first couple minutes. In this opening quarter, a 4-3 lead for number 20 Syracuse over number 15 Albany. And physical play between these two local rivals. It's the Cuse with the early advantage in the Carrier Dome. Cross telecast on the ACC Network Extra is Sunday, February 24th, as Army travels to the Dome to face the Orange. Game time set for 4 p.m. You can catch Syracuse men's lacrosse all season long on the ACC Network Extra. During that break, Tehoga Nanticoke, number one in purple, the star of the offense for Albany. 50 goals a year ago as a freshman, getting his leg taped up. It's all the way up past his shin. He's back out on the field but something to keep an eye on. He was favoring that right leg as he walked back to the bench at points in that first quarter. Altamari stays in. He's had two cracks at it for Albany at the faceoff X and has been unsuccessful so far. This time he's going against Varello. He was against Fop his first couple tries. And he wins it. Not necessarily outright, but good wing play by the Great Danes. And Bergmaster, one of the captains, Jack, a senior this season. When asking Scott Marr about how you can replace T.D. Erlin, who was so impressive at the face-off X, one of the best not only in recent memory, but probably of all time, and how effective he was at that position, how you can replace it, he said, we have to work our butts off. We don't look at it as what we don't have. We look at it as what we do have. And he thinks they have two guys who can both go out and do it on any given possession. Searches with a good defensive stand to start the second quarter. The answer is you can't. <laughs> right, you can't replace that guy. A guy of that caliber, one of the best college face-off men in the country. He'll go down as one of the best all time. So, you know, Albany has got to have a collective effort of their wings crashing in there, doing a better job on ground balls. And 
trying to create a few more scrums and stuff like that. But they were a little spoiled last year with that make it take it. So you're telling me, you're telling me that when Casey Powell graduated and someone said, hey, how do you replace Casey Powell? That's different, man. Okay, okay. <laughs> Obviously, Mike can't replace Ryan, but that's, that's all a separate story. Syracuse with a one-goal lead after one quarter of play. A fast-paced first quarter between these two teams. Pat Carlin comes in and immediately rips a shot, but it was saved by Sikirski, who's played well. Keep in mind, this is his first start in net for Albany this season. Last year, he came in and played 24, about 25 minutes in that final four game against Yale. He's been in the limelight before. He knows what it takes to be a starting goalie at this level. I get frustrated watching the play when that happens. You know, you're so early on in the shot clock. This happened multiple times against Colgate. We've already seen bad shot selection out of some of the midfielders here today. But that is so early there for Carlin to take that outside shot. It'd be different if it was going 115 miles an hour. But guess what? It wasn't. It was about an 85 mile an hour shot. Not very well placed. And that's basically a turnover. The ball's going the other way. Great play by Brett Kennedy to come and help Grant Murphy defensively and cause the turnover. Syracuse now to clear. And it is Murphy who crosses midfield. So a reset with Voigt, who had two goals in the first quarter. Just one off his career high. Tied a career high with two goals. Did that three separate times before today. Syracuse is one of the better clearing teams in the country over the last couple of years. Last year did it at about 86% of the time. Tripoli, Lipka, high to low, and saved again by Sikirski. Easy clear for the Great Danes, and they'll try to start a quick offensive possession. They want to get in transition. They want to shoot within the first 15 or 20 seconds of that shot clock. But they'll get it to their star, Nanticoke. Dangerous pass from Junker, and it was picked off by Syracuse. Helmer has it. Back to Porter. Now Mellon. And here's the clear for the Orange, Lipka. Great job again by the Syracuse defense to be aware of those passing lanes. Yeah, they're doing a great job getting their sticks in the lane. Now, if you're Syracuse, get a good offensive possession here. Move the ball, funnel it through, get your attackman to touch the ball. And most importantly, great shot selection. Let's go, boy. Curry and Triboli playing catch, and it's going to be Curry taking the responsibility on this possession. Finds Triboli. He was open. Middle feed. Voigt again. He's got his first hat trick of his career. Bradley Voigt picked a great day to have a career day. And Syracuse takes a two-goal lead. This is awesome offense right here. It starts with Curry. Draws a slide off Trimboli. Trimboli catches. Great vision to see the field. And get it to your hot hand number one. Bradley Voigt, great placement, good hard shot. He's shooting the ball extremely well here tonight. First hat trick of Bradley Voigt's career. The senior has come ready to play after a rough start against Colgate last week. SU already with five goals today after scoring nine through four quarters a week ago. Yeah, Bradley Voigt shooting the ball very well right now. High percentage, places the ball really well, but that was all set up by Curry and Trimboli's vision. Gave Voigt plenty of time and room to shoot the ball and stick one to the back of the net. Morello with another win against Altamare. Syracuse with a chance to pad that lead even more and double up on the number 15 team in the country. Something we were wondering coming into this game, how will the Orange respond to a, a letdown performance against Colgate a week ago? And Scott Moore even said it coming into this game. He says, I know that they haven't forgotten what we did to them a year ago, 15-3 to win, and they haven't forgotten what happened to them just a week ago. So he expected them to come out firing on all cylinders, and they certainly have. Yeah, they're doing a great job with their effort and energy. They're getting after ground balls. They're playing with a little bit more hop and enthusiasm on the offensive end. And I would think that the only thing that I'm critiquing them over right now is their shot selection. 
That one was pretty good by Jacob Buttermore. He finds Twine in Syracuse. Up by three on the big, bad, great Danes of Albany. Excellent improvement thus far on the offensive end. Last week against Colgate, the ball was in one guy's stick. The other five guys were doing a lot of standing around. Now you're seeing the ball moving extremely fast from one guy's stick to the next. They're doing a great job with their footwork, being a threat to get to the front of the cage or go by their defensemen, and therefore Albany is having to slide in those situations, and it's leaving open midfielders across the top with enough time and room to shoot good, high-quality shots. Jones back in at the face-off X for Albany after Altamari was unsuccessful in his tries. And Jones jumped a little early. Schwaznik picks it up. Syracuse with a chance if Kennedy can track it down and save it from going out of play. He does. It's been the name of the game today. Syracuse is dominating at the X. Eight to four. The Orange with an advantage. Lipka who was definitely not shy a week ago against Colgate, had his chances, just didn't convert on very many. He had a goal and an assist against the Raiders. Tromboli had the first goal of the day for the Orange, and that's it. Six goals for Syracuse, three of them courtesy of Bradley Voigt. Here he is again. Another lefty delivery. Voigt is unstoppable, and Syracuse is up by four. Bradley Boyd is doing an unbelievable job without the lacrosse ball, and he's being rewarded for it. It's the midfielders of Trimboli and Curry that are dodging hard and high from the up top wings, and they're bringing a lot of traffic with them. Albany's having to come with a slide package. Bradley Boyd's just finding those open areas, and he's catching and shooting. The ball at a really high level right now. He's placing the ball perfectly, and he's got the goaltender's number right now. Albany and Scott Marr call a timeout. They are being outscored by that man, number one in white, Bradley Voigt, who has already had a career-high four goals in about a quarter and a half and doing it in about the same way, catching and firing. Yeah, you notice that he's not doing anything with the one-on-one -on -one dodge situation. Everything is finding an opening in that Albany defense, getting himself positioned in a good place to receive a pass from one of these top midfielders from the Syracuse Orange. They're doing a great job finding him, and he's doing an unbelievable job of catching the ball and releasing it right away. He's not holding on to it for one, two, three seconds. No, he's catching it and releasing it all in stride. Last year when these two teams met up in the Carrier Dome, a 15-3 final score, Albany taking that and running with it to 10 straight wins to start the season. A big reason for that large sum of goals, Dehogan Nanticoke had five. Jacob Patterson had four. Bradley Voigt, who is experienced, those two were youngsters, a freshman and a sophomore a year ago. You have a senior who in his senior campaign in the second game of the season and what is a crucial game to win for Syracuse is doing everything he can to put his team on his back and fire him into the back of the net and he has been as I said unstoppable in the early going against Albany Nanticoke and company are going to need to find an answer to Voight and it's going to have to start the face off X yeah I think that on the Albany offensive end you're starting to see how important we we've been talking about TD Erlin and getting possession of the ball and how important the face-offs uh, were for Albany last year. Well, they miss Connor Fields, too. Let's not take anything away from him. He was one of the best college attackmen that's ever played this game, and uh, he's no longer with the team. He really, you know, took a lot of the pressure off Dehoka Nanakoke. And a lot of a lot of the games last year where he would either draw the top defenseman from the opposing squad or Connor Fields was an unbelievable quarterback that could drive, that had awesome vision and get the ball to number one. But he was the man that was creating most of the offense and they no longer have Fields. So far it shows that they do miss Connor Fields. Albany puts a long stick at the faceoff back. Pat 
Burrow, a defenseman, a junior from Victor, New York, but it's still unsuccessful. Fop lost his helmet on the possession. Here's the hit on Jacob Fop as he just gets clocked on the head at first and then the second and third efforts put Fop on his back. So Albany actually using the aggressive play and the long stick to their advantage as much as they can, but Syracuse still gains the possession amidst the chaos and Curry will take it for the orange. I think that's a good point that you brought up. Losing Connor Fields is is really difficult, and Scott Moore said that they can do it by by offense, uh, by committee, if that makes sense, and he says that Tehoga Nanticoke has been instrumental in, in how he's improved as a leader, vocally, and, and all of that. But at the end of the day, you're losing somebody who scored more than 300 points in their college career, someone who teams had to pay attention to, teams had to lock into defensively, and just like you said, Ryan, it allows for Patterson or Nantico to free themselves up just a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. Number two all-time NCAA Division I scoring leader was Connor Field. So, uh, you know, that's a very important piece to the puzzle and where they had success last season. And, you know, it'll probably take them a little bit of time to figure out who their top quarterback's going to be in their ball carrier and who's going to drive and draw slides from up top or down low so you know Albany's first game here and I think offensively they're still trying to figure some things out Syracuse seems to be working like a well-oiled machine on the other hand seven goals still eight and a half to play in this second quarter Curry Trimboli looking for another one but a save by Nate Sikirski he's been somewhat of a bright spot yeah he's let seven in but he's played well and stood tall a takeaway for Syracuse. Curry races and then realizes he has no numbers. Boyd's been the hot hand. He's number one in white in the middle of your screen. Watch for him off the ball. He's been making some great cuts, finding the open space. He sure has, and Albany hasn't adjusted to it. I see he's open again right now. Doing a great job floating into those different areas and getting his hands free. So keep going with what's working right now, and that's driving down the alley, rolling back, two quick passes, and find number one with the ball. Half the shot clock is gone for Syracuse. Trimboli forces his way. Sakirski with an easy save. Yeah, easy save. Again, that's the second shot by number 12 on this particular offensive set by the Orange that he's gone high to high right into the goaltender's stick. He's got to do a better job with his shot selection. He's got to bring the ball from up high and go down to the lower two corners more often. That's been my biggest critique about number 12 since he's been here playing with the Orange. He's a phenomenal player out of Victor. and. Uh, you know, he just doesn't do the best job with his shot selection, but we talk about how good and how talented he is because he gets shots off anytime he wants to. Patterson working against Helmer, who actually had a goal last week against Colgate, and gets help from Durth on the backside. Leaves a man open. Here comes Albany, forcing their way inside. Eccles will try and leaves it wide. The Great Danes are there. Kyle Casey backs it up and will start with 18 to shoot for the Great Danes. Down by four. There's Nantico. He's been blanketed so far. Porter has it in his stick. Syracuse coming the other way. They got numbers. Here's Kennedy. Kennedy's coming with the play. Kennedy. Rafis. Solomon wound up and then decides to pull it back. So 20 seconds gone by on this possession. Syracuse will reset and see what they can come up with. Haven't seen a ton of action at X behind the cage. But Solomon and Rafus have stayed back there to somewhat quarterback this offense for the Orange. Here is Rafus. Buttermore. Has a goal in the second quarter, his first of the season. Now Carlin, who's been pretty aggressive in his time today. 
Lucas Quinn, a sophomore from Niskayuna, New York, a lacrosse hotbed. Went to Niskayuna High School. Carlin will fire and connect. Syracuse can do no wrong offensively. Pat Carlin puts his team up five. Syracuse is playing very good lacrosse right now. Being extremely patient on the offensive end. Doing a great job moving the ball. Bringing up a lot of different guys for shots. They've been playing at a high level. Those shots, they're low and the goalie can't stop them. That's right, Bradley Voigt has already doubled his career high in the first half alone with four goals today. Let's see if he can stay hot. Back to the dome with Noah Eagle and Ryan Powell. Thanks so much, Drew. Voigt, number one in white, has been the star. Number one on the other side, Dehoga Nanticoke, had 50 goals a year ago, just one today, and it was in the opening two minutes. He's been bottled up since. Yeah, Bonberry's been doing a great job guarding him on the defensive end, number 18. Knows Nanticoke very well and knows a lot about his game. And uh, right now, advantage 18 for the Orange. Bomberry has done his part, as has Jacob Fopp, who has come in and been effective at the faceoff X today after a pretty successful day a week ago against Colgate coming in of relief for Danny Varello. Syracuse with a 10-4 advantage in faceoff today and an 8-3 lead over the number 15 Albany Great Danes. Final four and a half minutes of this first half. If you're Syracuse, you have the momentum on your side. What can you do to continue that as they give away the possession to Albany? Well, they got a moving pick called on him right there. That was a pretty good call. But, uh, you know, it's important for Syracuse to stay focused here. Everybody continue to do their job. Sometimes you get a five-goal lead in games like this, and you try to do stuff that you're not used to doing, not what the team wants you to do, bad turnovers. On, you know, some four shots behind the back passes. So they got to stay focused. They got a lot to build on right now. They got to continue to improve and get better. So uh, Syracuse got to stay focused and keep doing what's working for them. And that's dodging hard from up top and finding number one Voight. For Albany, they got to find their number one in Nantico, who has a mismatch against Trimboli cutting towards the net. Here he is, Nantico, and it's turned away by Drake Porter. Great play by the man in net for the Orange, and Kennedy comes the other way for Syracuse. The long pole in transition, sailed it past Solomon, and Albany catches a break. Great save by 33, Drake Porter. Good crafty, well-placed shot by Nanako, cutting through the alley there. But uh, 33, Drake Porter, awesome save, and puts the ball to the other end of the field very quickly. A so great again, cut. Yeah, number one right there. A little twister shot to the top <laughs> corner. But uh, Porter shut the door. And a way to stay tall against one of the more powerful players in the country. Nanticoke 6'1", 248 out of Six Nations, Ontario. And courtesy of the IMG Academy in Florida. So the matchup as Almost a double comes for Nanticoke. If you look in the middle of your screen, Bomberry and Kennedy there for relief, playing well off of his man, Steve Ramirez. Ramirez now has the ball, and Kennedy's forced to honor him. 25 to shoot for the Great Danes. A jump shot from the freshman, Date McComer, was errant. Syracuse. Wasn't there to back it up. It was Albany instead, and Nanticoke will retrieve it. If you can't get him the ball in the flow of the offense, just have him start with it. And that's what he does, using the body against Bomberry, twisting and turning his way towards the cage. Nanticoke finds the cutter. A falling try was wide. It looked like it was from Eccles, retrieved, and I think a flag hit as well. Buzzer sounds, shot clock. And confusion on the field. The shot clock went off. A flag is down. Albany still has it. Nanticoke on his way to the goal. A flag flies this there as well as Porter hit the deck hard. Extracurricular activities. Porter is shaken up. Nanticoke at 250 pounds 
barrel towards him. That should not necessarily be a goal as he went into the crease. We'll see what the call is because there was a flag before that, so there are two penalty flags on the field. A wild sequence for the Great Danes offense. Yeah, I think they could both be the same call. I mean, it looked like a push in the back to me right here by Kennedy. That's what forced him to go towards the goaltender and into the goalie. So I would say that's a call on Kennedy. The goal should be good. And it is Nanticoke's second goal of the afternoon. Brings his team back within four, and we'll see what the official call can be hey, here. He had two, as you said. We had, we had two technical fouls. We had two technical fouls on white. They are wiped out. Goal is good. Get back in your boxes. Get back in your boxes, please. Get back to your boxes. take another look because a lot of emotion from both sidelines and both coaches and different styles so here Nantico picks it up there's already a flag on the field makes his leap towards the crease pushed from behind by Kennedy and somehow still converts through Drake Porter the push was on Kennedy behind he goes to the box And it's going to be an extra man opportunity now Explain it on a free play from Albany. So the Great Danes with a wide opportunity now to try to work their way and crawl their way back in in the final two minutes of this first half. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, the Dome crowd and Coach Sesco are fired up. Sometimes coaches just fight so they can get the next call, but clearly on that replay, I think that's what, exactly what we saw. So that's a big goal by Nana Coke. It'll get him going a little bit. The second of the day. And that uh, brings Albany back within four. So amidst all of it, we'll go even strength, four goal game, Fop versus Jones at the faceoff X. Here's where that momentum can shift towards Albany if they can win this faceoff and they do. The wing comes in and scoops it up for the Great Danes. That was Sean Gleason, one of the captains. They have four on this team. A defenseman, Redshirt Jr. from Massapequa Park, New York. McComer has it in his cross. A minute to shoot for Albany. A minute and a half to play in this first half. Syracuse has controlled for the vast majority of the first two quarters. But the Great Danes have the door just open enough to get themselves back in it. Patterson has been quiet. No goal today after a four goal performance a year ago against the Orange. Using his body, loses the ball. Syracuse has it. Helmer picks it up and jogs it across the field. Syracuse in transition. Voigt's been the hot hand with four goals today. He matches Albany's total as a team. Number one in white. Curry with two assists on the afternoon. I was just going to say, wouldn't be surprised to see a coach, Coach Tesco, take a timeout. He sure did. So Desco calls timeout. Still a little bit jawing back and forth with the official. And he's not happy with the call beforehand as Nantico bulldozed into Drake Porter. An 8-4 game now after that goal. And Scott Marr will talk about his defensive strategy against what the Orange are going to bring offensively. Voigt has four goals in this first half. Do you go to him on this possession? Yeah, I think that you got to keep doing what's working right now, and that's getting Trimboli or Curry the ball. Let them dodge from up top. Roll back two passes and find Voigt in the open area. He's doing a good job finding those lanes and getting himself in a position to be able to catch and shoot the ball. So you want to make sure that you don't give Albany an opportunity to go down to the other end. So I wouldn't engage in any offense yet other than just throwing the ball around the outside until you're at about 12 seconds and uh, make sure that you do a good job controlling the ball. And somebody's responsible to get back on defense if you are to lose it or the goaltender makes a save. The worst thing that could happen if you're Syracuse right now is to have transition go the other way before the end of the half and score a goal. Dehoga Nantico, five goals a year ago against the Cuse today. He's got two. The first one came two minutes in, and it was just a nice, easy shot straight to Drake Porter. He let it just trickle into the net, and then the most recent one. 
Air Nantico as he flew in there and put it in the back of the net. He has two of his team's four. Again, no Connor Fields this year, no TD Erlin, the two notable losses from Albany a year ago. But Nanticoke is still here, and he's still one of the best players in the country. No doubt about it. Extremely talented. You know, one of the top attackmen that the game has right now in college lacrosse. I felt like he's been a little bit lackluster here in the first half in terms of demanding the ball. You know, I'd like to see him pop out of the middle a little bit more than what we've seen so far and go get the ball and try to go one-on-one -on -one and create some offense for the Danes. If that hasn't happened, they've seemed to struggle just a little bit when Nanakoke doesn't have the ball. Scott Marr, a six-time America East Coach of the Year, nine America East Tournament Championships, ten appearances in the NCAA Tournament, and six victories in the NCAA tournament as well for a program that in recent years, in the past five years or so, has taken off in Albany. Syracuse can hold for the final shot if they choose on this possession, up by four, looking for that first win of the season and to avoid the first 0-2 start since 1974. Curry. Hesitation move, Voigt on the perimeter. Bouncer saved by Sikirski, but a flag flew in late. Whistles are blowing from every which direction as Bergmaster and Solomon get into it. Bergmaster, the captain for Albany, a senior. Solomon, a senior. They've seen each other each of the last four seasons. Let's look again at what happened. Shot from Voigt. Sikirski came with a save, a box out from DeLui. Well, the flag happened on the slide coming up that hit Boyd a little bit late and a little bit high. I would have liked to see the officials let that one play on myself. This is a big boy sport that's full of contact and hard play. Uh, but nonetheless, Syracuse gets a man up opportunity. And if you're Syracuse, you're gonna hold on to this ball. Concussions. Take, take possession in the second half. Concussions are a point of emphasis, so those high sticks, those high hits are a big deal to the officials this season. They do just as you say, Ryan, and hold it, go into half, up by four, courtesy mainly of Bradley Voigt. Four goals to match Albany by himself. That's number one in white, number one in purple. Dehoga Nantico, two goals by himself. Two out of the four for the Great Danes. Number 15, down by four after two quarters of play. The Syracuse Orange, following a loss last week, have come out inspired. Two quarters in the books. Albany, down by four. Syracuse, eight. The Great Danes, four in the dome. Covering up the Great Danes after 30 minutes at the Carrier Dome. Hi, everybody. Welcome inside our ACC on ESPN studios for the halftime show between Syracuse and Colgate. I'm Drew Carter alongside the former Atlantic Sun player of the year at Jacksonville University, Ashton Hyron. Ashton, we knew Syracuse was going to come out firing after their first loss against Colgate. How does a team react to losing a game that most people expected them to win? Drew, after a game like that, you can be sure that you go to practice and you're going to get your backside handed to you. And it's going to be hard and it's not going to be fun, but you work out those kinks and you get them out in practice so that when you come game day, especially against a team like you, Albany, you're confident and you're ready to go. And you've got more fire in your belly than you did before. Now, we knew Syracuse was going to come out hot in this game. And we knew Desco was going to punish them in practice because this is a place that Syracuse is not used to being, Ashton. They rarely lose their season opener. Yeah, they, they have a long history of, you know, coming out and winning their season opener. And when you're a team like this, John Desco has a great record of bringing his, him team, his team back and recovering from losses. But you have to remind them of their history. You also have to remind them to have that look forward attitude and to not let that one losing game, you know, really affect the, the talent they've got going forward. Now the Orange looking to, to avoid going 0-2 for the first time ever under Desco in, in two-plus decades and for the first time since 1974. We said it. We knew they were going to come out physical. We knew they were going to come out firing. We've seen that for sure in the first 30 minutes. Let's see in the first half. Syracuse and Albany, this is a state rivalry. New York versus New York. Two teams who don't like each other very much, and you can tell from the jump. They're putting a lot of pressure on Nantes as we all expected. 
But his teammates are reacting to this as well, and there's a lot of beef on the field. There's a lot of physical men all going for the ball and, frankly, all going for each other. Number one in purple, you said it. That's Dehonga Nanticoke, the reigning America East Freshman of the Year. He's 6'1", 248, so he doesn't get tossed around very often. But Syracuse is coming out with a vengeance from that last game against Colgate, and they knew they had to play hard if they wanted any chance today because Albany is a team, Ashton, that not only beat Syracuse 15-3 to in the Carrier Dome last year, they were one of the best teams in the country all season last year. Well, Drew, they had a balanced team. Maybe the best team that they had that was in the NCAA, but they had maybe the best face-off men in the country, T.D. Erland, and also Connor Fields. He ranked second all-time in NCAA points. So that is an all-round team, and that's just a team that, you know, they're returning a lot of people, but they're losing two key people as well. They're losing the best face-off guy in the country. That's not up for debate. T.D. Erland won more than 79% of his draws last year. He's gone transferring to Yale, pulling a Kevin Durant move, joining the team that beat him in the playoffs last year. And then Connor Fields, like you said, one of the best offensive players in the sport's history. But who do they still have? Number one, Dehoga Nanticoke. He's maybe the biggest star in all of college lacrosse. And earlier today... He let everyone know that he was ready for this game. You check out his Twitter. There's a Baker Mayfield quote right here. Woke up feeling dangerous right at 7 a.m. I'm convinced he scheduled that tweet. It's and he right came seven. into the game and it looked like, you know what? It looked like he did wake up feeling dangerous. And that is a tweet that you read that as, as Syracuse and, you know, you're going to be a little afraid. He's a good player. Well, Ashton, back in your playing days, as we see Nancy Coke score their first goal on a bullet. That was Albany's first goal. But when you were playing, did you read your opponent's Twitter timelines? True, of course. Why wouldn't you? If someone's going to tweet this out, one, it's directed towards you. And two, you know, that's that's trying to spark a little bit of tension. And you know what? I bet he did it. And I bet Syracuse men will cross read that. That's, it's a little bulletin board material. And so Syracuse has come out and they've shown to Elgin Antico, he's not just going to walk into the dome and rip five goals like he did last year. Now, he does have the two goals, but the Orange are not making it easy. And one reason why Syracuse is making it tough on Albany is Albany's first, goal, first half goal total matched by one guy, Bradley Voigt, number one in white and orange, not number one in purple and gold, has four goals. He's doubled his career high. Watch him as he's sniping shots. He's picking corners all day. Albany didn't expect him to be a scorer. He hadn't been a scorer in the past for Syracuse, especially not one of their main ones. And his shot placement and his precision on all these outside shots really is very hard to stop. Bradley Voigt, typically a man-up specialist. He's been all over the place for Syracuse. Four goals in the first half alone, double his career high. And we still have 30 minutes left in this game between Syracuse and Albany. Still plenty more to come on our halftime show as well. Come back with us as we give you those highlights, those stats. We'll tell you if Syracuse can hang on and do the unthinkable as recently as a day ago. Can Syracuse beat Albany? We've got the answer coming up next. Syracuse at home trying to defend that Carrier Dome turf. So far, so good against the team that won 15-3 in this building last year. Right now, it is Orange 8. Great Danes just four after 30 minutes. Back on our halftime show alongside former Atlantic Sun Player of the Year, Ashton Hyron. I'm Drew Carter. Ashton, are you surprised by this so far, Syracuse winning? I am surprised. After their performance against Colgate last week, I didn't expect them to come out as firing as they were. Also, Albany is a great team with great players and... You expect them to come out and really get those points on the board before Syracuse did. Yeah, Albany only 15 coming in, but this is their season opener, and they were number one for a good portion of last season, and they made the Final Four. So this is not a team to sleep on. Let's see how Syracuse is out in front, 8-4 to four after 30 minutes at the Carrier Dome. It started with the orange. Jamie Tromboli with a shot through contact. Ashton, that kind of set the tone from the jump. It really did. That was an early goal, and it was what Syracuse needed to get started. Dehoga Nantico, though, you're not going to keep him off the board for very long. That's the Great Danes' first goal, rifling it through Syracuse's goalie, Drake Porter. But the Orange, not going away at all, and Bradley Boyd's a big reason. Yeah, they kept answering back goal after goal. If they seem to keep the tone between the two teams, not letting anyone really get ahead too early in the game. Bradley Voigt, number one in white and orange, was outstanding in that first half. He gets some help. That's Pat Carlin right there, number 15 for Syracuse. And the physicality was unbelievable throughout the first 30. But again, it's Nantico. And there he scores a second goal with a little extra help from Drake Porter going down. So Syracuse, Ashton, they're dominating this game more than twice as many shots. Yeah, and you've got to get those shots on cage to be in a position where you can lead a game like this. 28-12, to 12, that really shows that they've got confidence to go to cage, and it seems like whatever they worked on this week really paid off. Yeah, Syracuse is in command. Now, one reason why 
There might have been some Debbie Downers around Central New York about this Orange team. It's one of their best players from last year, Tucker Dordovic, is not going to play at all this season. He was a freshman last year, a sophomore starting on the midfield line. You see his plays, you see his numbers from last season, Ash, and this is one of their best players who's not going to be on the field at all. Dordovic was going to complete their midfield line, and that is a huge strength for Syracuse, coming into a season with a complete starting returning midfield line. And that's a big loss because he started every game as a freshman. And, you know, what what a what a great thing for him. But they did replace him with David Lipkin, who is who's a pretty good replacement to step into his shoes. Dordovic extremely aggressive last year, top five on the team in both goals and shots, and that's pretty remarkable considering that Last year as a freshman, he was the first true freshman at Syracuse to start at least 15 games. He started every one in more than a decade. So that's a big piece gone for Syracuse, but they are still winning right now for Albany, Ashton. How do they get back in this game? How does Albany win in these next 30 minutes? Albany has to continue with their fast plays. The Syracuse defense is setting up to take out um, to, to Hoka, and they're really... You know, they're trying to slow down that creative, that free flow style that um, Albany plays. So they have to, Albany has to keep pushing those breaks and coming up with big defensive stops because, as you can see, Syracuse is taking those outside shots and they're not afraid to go in. Now, for Syracuse, they've cooked up the right recipe so far. John Desco and company have their team leading by four for the Orange. How do they hang on and win this game? It all begins with face offs, and you can tell they've changed their face off men's. Their, um, going in between both guys, Danny Valero and Jacob Flop, and they're working. They're using the matchups to their advantage, and to, you've got to get the face-off to be successful, to let your attackmen do their job. So face-offs and possessions, they're way less scrappy than they were last week, and that is really showing in this game. All right, so Syracuse leading by four. Maybe the entire nation did not expect this, but the Cuse leading eight to four over Albany. So, Ashley, we know you're a little surprised by this result. But based on the way that Syracuse has played so far, do you think they've come out with the mentality that they're the better team on the field today? It looks like that. They're showing a lot of confidence, and I think their confidence shows in their aggressiveness and their physicality. They show that they're not scared of Nantucoke. You know, they're coming out with their bodies, and we saw one play where there was three guys around him. He still kept the ball, but that's intimidating no matter who you are. All right, this is a fun one at the Dome. Two teams who won it, two teams battle-tested. Syracuse looking to jump back in. Albany in their season opener. We've got a fun second half on the way. For Let's go back to the Dome. Noah Eagle and Ryan Powell, what do you got? Uh, we got a lot, Drew. Thanks so much. 8-4 Syracuse had a Scott Mars team in Albany, the number 15 team in the country. Syracuse at number 20 after the loss last week to Colgate, 12-9. to And in the first half, they just looked like they were playing inspired lacrosse. Bradley Voigt, four goals, a career high in the first half alone. If you look at the ground ball total, you look at the face-off total, Syracuse, 25-10 to ground balls, 9-5 to face-offs. That's been the story early on in this game. Well, the best coaches go out and they make adjustments. Coach Desco didn't like what he saw. What, what he's saw in a lot of different areas on the field from last weekend's loss to Colgate. Well, it looks like they've had one heck of a week in practice, and he's made adjustments in a lot of different areas, and this team has come out and firing on all cylinders. Great first half out of the orange. To your point, Noah, ground balls, what a difference a week makes. 14 ground balls in the first quarter, 11 in the second for Syracuse, so they're winning that battle 25 to 10 over Albany and it shows on the scoreboard a four goal lead for Syracuse who many people after last week uh, lost to Colgate and hearing Tucker Dordovic would be out for the year we're somewhat pessimistic about this team but they have come out firing ready to go and playing excited in this game against Albany a game they lost a year ago by a vast margin and they start with the man up. This would be a big goal if they could get one right here. They got a great man up unit like we've talked about. A lot of high powered players on this unit. Guys that can shoot the ball from up top. So look for Syracuse to generate a good shot and it would be one heck of a way to start the second half if you're the orange. High pass, Albany there. They take over, so possibly a missed opportunity to start the second half for the Orange. With the man up, about 50 seconds left in that man up when we started this quarter, down to 20 now, as the Great Danes will drain some clock and try to get back to even strength. They do have to clear in the next nine seconds. Perla 
Had it taken away, Solomon by uh, just a second, but Ron John picks it up and just gets it past midfield in time. Back to even strength. Syracuse and Albany, second half. And what should be a great one down the stretch. Syracuse is 15 and two overall in the series against the Albany Great Danes. They've played this every year for the last couple and it's the first game of the season every year for Albany and Scott Marr who does not care to play on the road in the dome to start the year for his guys. Bergmaster. Eccles over to Nantico. Getting him involved early this time against Durth. A short stick defensive mid but a save was made by Porter and Kennedy races the other way. That's his strength, his ability to clear the ball by himself. Dirth, extra pass, Bomberry in on the action, and it was deflected oh! away, but how about the rebound? Syracuse puts it in, but they don't call it a goal. They call it off. Voigt is irate. He thought he had another one, but instead Albany clears. Oh man, I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe they called somebody for in the crease. Great transition offense by Syracuse to find Bomberry who was trailing the play and then Voigt on the follow-up. Found the back of the net, but it won't count on the scoreboard. We'll try to get a replay as soon as we can. Instead, it's gonna be Albany and Eccles who have to goal, but another great defensive play. Brett Kennedy picked up by Durf. Peter Durf crosses midfield by himself, working one-on-one, -on -one, working against Ron John, falling down, hits the post. Voigt there again. Nantico working defensively, and he'll bring it in the other way just by himself. A brick wall in De Hogan. Nantico comes the other way and gets decked by Tyson Bomberry. Physical play continuing in the start of the second half. Cunningham loses his stick and goes to the bench. A flag is on the field, so a free play for Albany. We're going to have to take another look at that one. I didn't see that at all. I thought that was a great hit. Good trail check from behind. A couple of plays that we would like to see again. We'll see what the official call is on the flag on the field first. There's still a stick. I believe it's Cunningham's, and the official picks that one up as well. McComber goes to the bench, and let's hear what the call is. Calls on White. Number one, technical foul, 30 seconds. So Voigt goes to the box, which is a big loss. Let's look at this first no goal. Bomberry on the initial shot, it was tipped in right here on behind the back shot by Voigt, who's just feeling it so much that he can do that. And now here's the penalty, personal foul. Nanticoke was being trailed by Curry, a lower of the shoulder, and he went flying as Bomberry laid the hit. But it's Voigt who goes to the box. Eccles releases a shot. And now control is restored inside the dome. Yeah, this is an awesome game so far. A lot of energies out of both the clubs. They really want this win out here, and they're leaving it all on the dome turf. Back and forth action. Everybody's playing extremely hard. What a save. A rocket out of the stick of Eccles found the foot of Drake Porter on the extension. And now the Cues can go the other way if they can clear, and they do. Murphy does. He'll slow it down and reset the offense with Curry. I really like this Drake Porter's game, number 33. He's really impressed me. Great game against Colgate, and he's had some big time saves here today as well. Albany in position to score a goal, narrow the mark. They haven't been able to do it because 33 Porter shut it down. Six saves today. He had 14 a week ago against Colgate, but let up 12 goals. Today he's only let up the four, so Credit his defense and credit his stellar play in that. Good matchup right here. Trimboli on a short stick. He's one of the best dodging midfielders in the country. Finds Lipka. Working to his right. 
20 seconds to shoot for Syracuse. Rafis. Keeps it in a stick, bounces one towards the net, and another stop for Sikirski. We want to talk about Porter on one end, you got to talk about Sikirski on the other. Both have been fantastic. Quick offense for Albany, shot sails wide right, courtesy of Casey. Great Danes will reset with 71 on the shot clock. And Nanticoke will retrieve to start the possession. This has been a fun game to watch so far. I mean, the shot clock, I think it's only come into play maybe one or two times in the entire game. It's back and forth, up and down action. The way the game of lacrosse, in my opinion, should be played. These guys are getting after it. Nanticoke doubled again, loses the ball. But a whistle blows before Syracuse can pick it up. And it stays with Albany. A holding call against Syracuse keeps the ball with the Great Danes. But it takes an army to take down Nanticoke, as we've seen. Bombberry with the initial contact and the initial stop, and he's gotten help from several outlets on the Syracuse defense. And they force a turnover. Yeah, Syracuse defensively, they're doing exactly what they need to do. Nanticoke starting to back in, and then they're sending another slide super early, and the slide is coming hard. They're going right to the middle of the number one on Nanticoke's chest, and they're staying there until they try to get that ball down to the ground. And that's not an easy task, but they're playing it and executing on the defensive end very well when number one gets the ball. Voigt is back in the game, as is Buttermore and Carlin. All of them had at least one goal in the first half. Carlin towards the end. Now Solomon, he also scored. Elects not to use the pick from Rafis and instead work one-on-one -on -one by himself. He's working against DeLui, works his way inside, and it was stopped again by Sikirski. So Albany can come the other way. Keep in mind, a year ago, when Nanticoke had five goals against the Orange, he did it on those one-on-one -on -one opportunities against Tyson Bomberry. Bomberry, the senior, has made the adjustments this time around and kept him in check on the initial push. Sikirski now has 11 saves. Drake Porter with those six. Both players in net have been impressive. Borgmaster finds an outlet on the other side. The freshman in Yunker. Now to the other Birdmaster, this time Jack spins away from Buttermore. Jack Birdmaster got his hands free, bounce shot saved by Porter. Here's the other Birdmaster, Alex fires and misfires. No Nanakoke right now for Albany on this offensive possession. That's surprising. I don't know if he's getting his leg worked on again or just getting a breather from Coach Marr, but you got to have your top player out here down four, mid third quarter. You gotta have your top player on the field at all times. Ramirez has the ball. Nanticoke is on the bench right now for this possession, but they do get number 17. Patterson just set a pick for Ramirez. He had four goals in the game last year against Syracuse and 42 on the season. He's absolutely a weapon, number 17. Parker. Bergmaster to Casey, working against Cunningham. Bergmaster outside to the freshman in McComber. Here is McComber. Now draws the assignment on Cunningham. McComber falling away and he just missed his mark. Albany can keep it with 27 to shoot. Who is going to be the guy on this possession for the Great Danes? No Nanticoke. He's sitting on the bench right there getting a breather. He's seen a lot of action as a shot went away from Patterson and sailed wide again, ricocheted off of a Syracuse defender. Bergmaster retrieves with 15 to shoot for the Great Danes. This is not what we're accustomed to seeing from Albany, who's a fast-paced team and likes to rip a lot. Another shot from Casey was wide. Seven to shoot for the Great Danes. Yunker will get it. Nanticoke bathing himself in a Gatorade bath. Three seconds to shoot, and they're not going to get a shot off. Yunker will just roll it the other direction. Great defensive stand from the Orange, keeping this four-goal lead over the number 15 Albany Great Deans. This is so awesome watching games in the Dome. People in Syracuse are so knowledgeable when it comes to the game. 
they appreciated that defensive possession in which I thought it was the best Syracuse has looked all season on that end of the field. Awesome communication, great slide. Sure, Albany got some outside shots during that possession, but nothing that could beat Drake Porter for sure. And it ended up being a shot clock violation at the end. So great defensive shift there by the Orange defensive unit. Syracuse has forced double the turnovers than Albany in this game. Ten, ten Albany turnovers to Syracuse five. Cook inside, reversed himself, and another save by Sikirski. He's keeping his team in this by getting them these extra possessions and keeping this at only a four-goal game. Remember, there was a goal that wasn't called early in the second half by Voigt. Casey, good passing from Albany. McComber couldn't control it initially, and another great save by Porter. A lot of contact, but Syracuse has it with Griffin Cook. They got numbers. The freshman will run the show here. Cook stops, pops it back. Fusco fires, and it was wide. Solomon was there. So maybe not numbers, but a chance to generate some more offense on their third of the field. There have been no goals after the early one in this second half. There have been nothing. Another save by Sikirski. He's been a big reason why. Syracuse has gotten their chances. Sikirski has just been too good. Lipka misses the mark. And then a little bit of an extra trip on the back end. Solomon keeps his footing and keeps possession. No scoring in this third quarter. Approaching four and a half minutes to play. Solomon. Extra feed, Lipka rips it and misses the mark again. He has not been shooting the ball very well in the first two games of the season. Like Trimboli and my critique of him, Lipka seems to go high to high way too much. He's got to shoot at the bottom corners. And he's got to start hitting the cage. Here he is again. Lipka working his way inside. He bounced it just a little too early. 50 on the shot clock for the Orange. Three shots on this offensive possession for David Lipka. Cook, the outstanding freshman from Jamesville DeWitt High School right here in the Syracuse area. Got his defenseman caught in front of the cage, so if you're Syracuse, all five guys should be moving in front of the cage, cutting, keeping your stick up. He put it in the back of the net, but after the whistle blew, a moving screen again. Here comes Albany the other way. Cook with the aggressive defense and a lot of contact before midfield, but the clear is successful. Albany will come the other way. Nanticoke back in, face guarded by Tyson Bomberry at the bottom of your screen on the left. McComer has been aggressive in the last couple of possessions. Now John. Kyle Casey, who Scott Marr said so, is someone who's going to need to assume a larger role than he did last year, now a sophomore for this great Danes team. And he's got a lot of size, six foot four, to work at that midfield position. Deliberately working with the ball. Inside feed behind the back. John was there, but didn't have a shot. Nantico now has it on Cunningham. Squeezes it by him, but Porter saw it from the beginning. Nanticoke starting to get a little frustrated, having some trouble finding his shot. Trimboli is not. Here's the follow, and Voigt's got it this time. They can't take that one away. Bradley Voigt with five goals on the afternoon, and Syracuse up by five. An incredible performance by Bradley Voigt. He's got five goals. He's outscoring the Albany Great Danes by himself. The last one on a follow by the senior. Syracuse in command in the third.
Syracuse after the 0-1 start, trying to get to 1-1 one one on the season. A five-goal lead over Albany and have kept number one in purple in check. Dehoga Nanticoke, one of the best players in the country, a sophomore this season. And they've done it in a variety of ways, but mostly with physical play. Yeah, Bonberry's doing an unbelievable job on him. He's staying nice and low on his body, right on his hips. Textbook defense. And then when the Syracuse slides come, they're going right to the middle of his number one, right in the middle of his chest. So you see the slide comes right here by Mellon, and they're just shutting the door down. Nanakov is frustrated. He's holding onto the ball too long. He's a big threat. He's got to make a move and get the ball out of his stick. Two players from Six Nations, Ontario. Dehoga, Nanticoke, and Tyson Bomberry. You were here last year, Ryan, when those two went to battle, and Nanticoke got the better of Bomberry with five goals in his first ever college game. What's the main difference that Bomberry has made, the main thing that he has done differently this year to change that? Well, I think that Nanticoke now has to be the guy, and we talked about it earlier, how important Connor Fields was to this team and the offense. You know, so now Nanakoke's the guy that's got the ball on his stick. He's got to do the dodging and creation on the offensive end. And uh, he struggled to do that so far here today. He's got to make a dodge, get the slide to come, and then move the ball because there's an open guy on the backside from Albany. And they got some great shooters to compliment Nanakoke. But he's been holding on to the ball too long, and he's struggled being the new quarterback of the Danes offense so far. Here it is, Nanticoke on a free possession. Feeds it to the other side. Here's a shot from Ramirez. It sails wide. And let's see what the call is. By the way, Voigt now with five goals in this game. The last time a Syracuse player scored five or more goals was Brendan Bomberry in the season opener against Binghamton last year. That was on February 10th. Point he 18. had five. Point 18. 30-second technical pull. White, 18, 32nd, 10 And that's a big play because it's Tyson Bomberry out for 30 seconds, which could free up Nanticoke on this possession. Yeah, they got the man up unit out there, so they're already going to be starting with an extra guy. And Albany's got some good sticks and some good shooters, so they're going to try to uh, move the ball quickly and free up somebody on the outside. I like that Syracuse is shutting Nanticoke off on the inside. A potato on the perimeter. Diamond has it now. Shot sailed wide. That was off of Patterson. Still 10 to shoot in this man up. Let's see if they can get another shot off quickly. Casey. Now Diamond. Back to Casey. Couldn't handle the pass. Scoops it up. Back to even strength. Skip pass. Patterson again. Rather Eccles off the post. So a reset of the shot clock. Bomberry back in the game as Eccles just misfired by a couple of inches. Good ball movement there by Albany. Got a great shot. Good look at the cage. But uh, Syracuse went with a box and one on Nanakoke, and it really worked. Albany was freezed up a little bit for a lot of that man up opportunity, kind of looking around with questions of what to do and how are we going to break this and who's going to take the shot. Syracuse playing some good defense and changing things up. So a great job by the coaching staff coming out with a different look on that man up or man down possession. Eccles draws and kicks. Now Patterson. He has been quiet as well after four goals a year ago. Finds his space inside and he missed it outside. Looked like it may have gone in, but instead it squeezed to the outside That's and great. hit the back of the net. Here's that transition. Helmer had a goal last week in transition. Cook fires up high, and he missed it. And the hustle by Albany gets them possession as well. Great job by the Albany defense and Pat Burrow. Final five seconds of this third quarter. Is there going to be one more shot? Bergmaster's going to have to take it. He does, and Porter's there. Stands tall in between the pipes. And Syracuse will go into the final quarter with a five-goal lead, courtesy of Bradley Voigt, the senior. Five goals, the first time in over a year that has happened for a Syracuse player. This was the last one, a follow off the Trimboli shot. Syracuse, up big. Number eight, North Carolina. Number two, Duke.
Wednesday at 9 on ESPN. Spurs, Raptors, tips off a doubleheader Friday on ESPN. Syracuse up 9-4, to four, Drake Porter, and that has been a steady rock between the pipes, saving 10 shots so far today in a variety of ways. Yeah, he's really played at a high level today. Some days, as a goaltender, you come out and you're just really seeing the ball. He's on everything right now. Even the balls that have gone past him, he's either caught a little piece of it with his body or it's nicked off his stick. He seems like he's seeing everything. And uh, he's doing a great job for the defensive unit for Syracuse. He played great against Colgate, and he's having another outstanding go of it here today. He had six saves in that third quarter. By the way, Syracuse has won 20 straight games when leading after three quarters of play. And the last time that they lost was a long time ago in holding teams to less than 10 goals per game, 52 straight wins. When doing that, Albany has four, but a chance to add more now. Early face-off win for the Great Danes. It was Jones who took that face-off against Fop. Fop has stayed in defensively on this possession. Most offensive possessions that we've seen here today out of Albany, number one, Nanakoke has been just standing in the middle of the field. I'm not sure why... Uh, Coach Marr is allowing that to happen. He should be going out and setting picks. I know Bomberry's making it really tough for him to get the ball, but uh, Nanakoke should go out there and set picks for guys on his team and be more active and be a part of what's going on. Right now, it's way too much standing around. Ramirez finds Noah, who had a goal early for Albany, their second of the day in the first quarter. Nothing since. Mellon with a good play finds Porter and a chance to clear for the Cuse. Cunningham, one of the captains for the Syracuse team. They have Tyson Bomberry, Austin Fusco, Brad McKinney, Cunningham, and Peter Durth as their captains this year. And can't successfully clear. So here comes Albany quickly. Numbers for the Great Danes, and they finish. It's Taylor Noah or rather Noah Taylor again, and he sticks it for his second of the day. Albany back within four. Smart play by Albany, offsides by Syracuse. They spread out their players. They move the ball extremely quick, wide open, one-on-one -on -one shot. There's no one in the country that's gonna save that one with that kind of time and room on the doorstep. Noah Taylor, big time goal. The second of the day. So Varello back out for the faceoff against Austin Jones. And this is a big one because a quick goal there is what Albany needed to get some of the momentum on their side. If they can win this faceoff and quickly go back down the other way, this is a team that likes to play with pace and likes to shoot it quickly into the shot clock. Good battle between the two. Eventually, Syracuse wins it. Schwoznik picks it up. Elmer has it. And the Orange will start this possession with Bradley Boyd. Only the best shots now if you're Syracuse. And you're on the offensive end here. you got to have... Good solid dodge, stay aggressive, but only settle for the best shots and not giving up stuff in the early part of the shot clock. Take the shot clock a little bit deeper than normal and make sure that you produce a high quality shot in the end. Good matchup here with Trimboli again on a short stick. I love this matchup. He creates a slide and then he can move the ball. Usually have an open guy on the backside. Right now it's Solomon with the ball working against Eric DeLui, five foot seven senior. Solomon, who has one goal in the first half, had it knocked out of his stick, but regains control, 15 to shoot for the Orange. Up by four, now 10 to shoot. Rafis is gonna have to do it himself against Filipowski. Finds a cutter inside, Lipka couldn't handle it. And it's scooped up by Sikirski. A lot of contact right around the crease, no call. Albany will take it the other way. About three minutes gone by in this fourth quarter. Syracuse came in 
to the final frame with a five goal lead. Bergmaster working his way inside, shovels one towards Porter, and he was there. Nanticoke applied pressure to Porter, but he gets it away, and Bomberry takes it up the sideline instead. So 10 more seconds to clear for the Orange. They're going to have to do it in the next five, and they do. Lucas Quinn does it by himself. So Void again will restart this offensive possession for Syracuse, and you have to believe they're going to try to drain some clock. Syracuse has looked really good in the clearing game today. They struggled, especially in the first half against Colgate. Today they look like a new team. They're playing with a lot more confidence. And it starts with the goaltender, 33 Porter, but a good patience getting up the field, and they're executing the passes, making good passes. And uh, it's very important to have a good clearing game. And uh, they're doing that right now. So it's producing more offensive possessions than they had last week against Colgate. Rafus against Filipowski. Feed inside, he had a man right on the doorstep, Dirth. But it goes the other way, rather Solomon, and the shot clock will reset for Albany as they take possession. John Desco's team trying to drain that clock. It's now approaching 10 minutes, about five gone by in the fourth quarter. Albany has turned it over 12 times, Syracuse on the eight. Filipowski to Birdmaster. Jack Birdmaster was an America East All-Conference first team last year as a short stick defensive mid, but he can score when need be. He had seven goals a year ago. He was the number 35 ranked midfielder in the class of 2015. A captain this year for this Albany team. John over to Eccles. He had a goal earlier. But can't get past Brett Kennedy, who has played fantastic today. Patterson working against Mellon. Kennedy comes on the help and swipes it. Mellon scoops it up. Syracuse back the other way. Dirth couldn't handle the pass. He's got a tough ground ball to get here, and he pops it up in the air. Ron John takes it back. A lot of contact. That's a great call right there. That's Nanako being frustrated. Hit Mellon well after the play. If you're the Great Danes and you're Coach Mar and you're trying to get back in this game, in this situation, you got to be a smarter player than that. So the unnecessary roughness call against the star sophomore, Dehoga Nantico. Scott Mar talks to him and tries to calm him down just a little bit. It's been a frustrating game for Nantico. Coming off that 50 goal season has two in this game, but it has not been easy by any stretch. No, Syracuse has done a great job on him, and that's the reason that he's frustrated. And they've really taken him out of his game. And we came in and we talked about how, how high profile of a player he is and how he's one of the top in the country. Syracuse is, uh, have, has a game plan in place, and they're doing a great job executing it. And they execute once again. Brendan Curry on the board. He had a bunch of assists in the first half. His first goal of the afternoon, a man up opportunity. Syracuse doubling up Albany once again. Again, this man up unit is very talented. They get the ball in and out of their sticks. They got their six top offensive players out there. They got great vision. And Coach Desco and his staff is really doing a nice job with their sets and play selections that they do on the man up with the man up team rather. So excellent execution, great goal by Curry. We said his name a lot uh, last week against Colgate. Talked about him in the pregame. That was his first goal of the game, but nice catch, nice finish. Last year, Albany allowed just 8.6 goals per game. Syracuse in the first contest of the year against Albany, 10. Trying to avenge that loss from a week ago against Colgate. It was a 12-9 defeat. They've already bettered their total of only nine goals a week ago. They've got 10, five of them coming from Bradley Voigt, the senior, having a career day. Durth nearly took it himself, but Colgate keeps it on their side of the field. Schwab takes it 
at X. Albany with possession. Ramirez attacks the cage and a bad pass low for Patterson. That's what Syracuse fans are looking for. The Orange take over with a chance to drain possibly 80 more seconds off the game clock. And a wise play by Griffin Cook to back it out, reset, take a breath, and drain some more of this clock. Absolutely. Good, smart play by a freshman there. As I said before, if you're Syracuse, you're not in any hurry to do anything right now. Make sure that it's a high-quality shot. Make sure that it's deep into the shot clock every single time you get it in the offensive end from here on out. Last year, Albany came into the Carrier Dome and made a statement to the rest of the country with a 15-3 win over the Orange. This year, it's been a different story. Syracuse has been in command for the vast majority of the game. 15 seconds to shoot for the Orange, already doubling up on the Great Danes. Voigt tries another one. It was saved. And now a fresh shot clock. If Syracuse can back it out, and they do, they can... Twinkle this clock down to even more. They regain possession. The Orange will have it when we come back up 10 to 5 on the number 15 team in the country. On the brink of doing what seemed unthinkable yesterday. After last time out against Colgate, the Cues dropped their season opener. They're all over Albany today with just a couple minutes left. Drew Carter, Ashton Hyron. We've got your post game. Ashton, Syracuse looks pretty good today. This Syracuse team seems like a whole new Syracuse team, and they're better than Albany today. The Orange trying to seal the deal against the Great Danes. Let's get those last final minutes. Noah Eagle and Ryan Powell take it away. Thanks so much, Drew. Just about seven minutes to play. Syracuse up by five, and they've done it in pretty much every aspect of the game out shooting the great danes 43 to 30 shots on goal 25 to 16 ground balls doubling them up 40 to 20. it's the hustle plays that win you games and that's evident for syracuse today yeah what a difference a week makes this looks like a completely different team syracuse has come out here energized playing with a lot of enthusiasm from the opening whistle it's been that way Battling for ground balls. I've noticed the attackmen riding extremely hard this entire game. Defense is playing great against Nanticoke and, and Albany offense. They've do, been doing a great job with their communication. And then Drake Porter has been having a phenomenal game as well. So this is a complete package that you're seeing right now. And uh, if this is what uh, Syracuse lacrosse is going to be all right, or uh, be all about rather, uh, they got some bright stuff ahead for them. So. You want to talk about a bright thing for the Syracuse Orange. Brendan Curry, his second goal in the last couple possessions was a rocket out of his stick. His second goal of the day, he's got five points, and he's doing it with style. He sure is. I'm not sure what he did this summer in terms of his training, but he's come back a better shooter. He's been shooting the ball extremely accurately on the run. So you notice right there on that goal that he scored, a perfectly placed shot to the upper 90. And uh, last week against Colgate multiple times, he was pinging him off the post with a dead accurate shooting. So uh, unbelievable job in the offseason by Curry to get himself prepared and have a great sophomore run. Already with five goals on the season. So does Bradley Voigt, but they're all in today's game. Face-off won by Jones and Albany. Let's see if the Great Danes can cook up anything offensively. Nanticoke is right there at the front of the crease being face-guarded by Tyson Bomberry. That's the matchup we've seen pretty much all day, and that's what we were wondering when we came into this game. Will we see Bomberry on Nanticoke, or will it be Nick Mellon? Because last week against Colgate, Bomberry started on Sam Cleveland, didn't work out as well. Mellon shifted over, and that had a lot more success. But today it's been Bomberry, and he's been tremendous. Yeah, he has been tremendous, and he has absolutely won that matchup against Nanakoke today for sure. Hustle defense by Dirth, picked up by Kennedy, but Nanticoke got a stick on it before the Orange could clear. 
Patterson the other way. Now Nantico had it slapped from behind. Kennedy gets him back, and here he comes the other way. Nantico won't catch him. Durth and Kennedy help to clear. Durth finds Lucas Quinn, and the Orange are in business offensively. Brett Kennedy has been a force defensively and unstoppable on the clear. Yeah, he's been great. Syracuse is going to milk this entire shot clock right here. They got a penalty on Coach Marr. He just lost it on the official. I don't blame him. If we can run that one back, Kennedy used his offhand. He took his hand off his stick uh, to give the ball a little tap so he could pick up a ground ball. And that was a missed call, and that's the reason that Coach Marr got so hot and uh, in turn got a couple uh, flags thrown on him and the bench. Buttermer hits the turf. Albany picks it up. There are actually two flags on the field. Tyson Bomber, he scooped him up with a stick. He's holding them both for the official. Marr, as you said, was not happy with the lack of the call. We'll see what they actually call on the field because there were a couple of things that probably could have been penalties on the last possession as Syracuse tried to clear it. As of right now, the Orange have 29 seconds on the shot clock, up by six, more than doubling up their local rival, which they fell to a year ago, 15-3. to three. It's been a reversal this season as the Orange have come out inspired, ready to play, and have done everything and pushed all the right buttons to get to this point. You missed the call. You missed the call. Coach, and then you get over there, please. Get over there, please. You fucking missed the call. Now you're going to And there's another one. Hat goes off. And let's see what all three of them are. Okay. Get three bench fouls. Three bench fouls. All right. All three. It's going to be three minutes. It's going to be non releasable. One guy's in the box. Okay. Wow. Three minutes worth of penalties on the bench for Albany. Non releasable. And there's only 425 on the clock. Yeah, it's a big one. I mean, that pretty much seals this game away. Who knows if they would be able to make a run back in this game anyway, but uh, Coach Marr lost it there for sure. And uh, the, the referees did miss a call, but uh, you know, we talked about Coach Marr being so laid back and, uh, you know, free-flowing. Uh, he definitely got rattled there by that referee making or missing that call at a big point in the game. The Syracuse faithful cheering on their team as they can smell a victory after a letdown in week one. Dehoga Nanticoke, Scott Marr, and the Albany Great Danes came in at number 15 in the land and have played not up to par compared to a season ago. Coming into this game, Syracuse, a four-game losing streak versus teams ranked in the USILA top 20. This would snap that. Great turnout in the Dome here. They're cheering on the Syracuse. Everybody's standing up, cheering on their orange right now. There was a lot of worried people in Central New York after that loss to unranked Colgate. But boy, has this team showed that they have some talent. They've responded in a big way. And uh, like we've talked about, Noah, these guys have executed a game plan and really played great from top to bottom, starting with the goaltender to an awesome defensive effort. Midfielders have been phenomenal, even the short stick D guys. And uh, the offenses show that they have some firepower and they're starting to execute at a high level as well. So uh, un un unbelievable uh, performance so far by the Orange. So it should be a three minute man up opportunity as there were three bench fouls, two on Scott Marr, one on an assistant. So it's six on five for the vast majority 
of what time is remaining on the clock. And now the Orange can really milk it with limited pressure from the Albany defense. What an improvement from a week ago. What a difference one week makes. Whatever you want to say about this Syracuse team, it's been night and day from the Colgate game to Albany. 11 goals with four minutes remaining. Five from Bradley Voigt. Two from Brendan Curry. Pat Carlin, Jamie Trimboli, Jacob Buttermore, Nate Solomon all scoring. It's been a group effort and a team performance for the Syracuse Orange. As you can see here, Syracuse just moving the ball around in the offensive end. Even though they're man up, they're in no hurry to try to go to the cage or produce a shot. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. I don't even like that for Sarah by Curry. You Tense. want that shot clock to go down under 10. Well, now it is under 10. Will Syracuse put a shot on net? Rapist behind the back. Voigt bounces it in. Shoot time in the Carrier Dome. The Syracuse Orange put up 12 on Albany. How about number six for Voigt? Number one, he's had one heck of a game. I like it, Rafus, great vision. Little BTB. And then he comes to Boy, who does a little twister shot. Past the Albany netminder, and that is number six on the day for number one. He's had the hot hand from the opening whistle. A year ago, Bradley Voigt, as a junior, scored nine goals all season. Today, against Albany, one of the premier teams in the country, he has six in one game. Number one is Fuego right now. Jones in there for Albany. And faceoff being taken for Syracuse by Nate Garlow. The Great Danes win it. Jones with the advantage. Syracuse still man up on that long three bench penalty on Albany. Great Danes need to clear and they get it past midfield. Bergmaster has it. Now Nanticoke. He still does have two goals in this game. Can he get a third? Patterson with a flip. Impressive. Couldn't find the back of the net. Bergmaster scoops it up 45 to shoot for albany to his brother jack bergmaster working against schwaznik finds some space shovels it inside saved again by porter any doubts about drake porter coming into this game he has squashed them real fast a tremendous performance for the junior from ontario this unbelievable effort out of the Syracuse team today. I've watched every single ride. I mean, even here in the late stages of the game, you got the second attack group in there and a deeper midfield unit. And they're out there scraping away, just battling until the very end. It's encouraging to see how hard these guys are playing and have played this entire game. Goalie change as Jake Nelson controls for the orange. A shot in front was saved. Basil a burn put it through. What a nice stop by Drake or by excuse me Nate Sikirski. Last time a Syracuse player scored six or more goals in a game was Dylan Donahue back in 2015. He had seven against Notre Dame. Bergmaster forces one to the net and the first save by Luke Strang. Here comes the orange Kennedy. Another feed in front, and this one goes through. Basil Aber puts it home. This awesome transition from my time playing here at Syracuse until today, the way that they still practice, there is a ton of emphasis put on unsettled drills. Getting the ball from the defensive end with full speed, pace, 
and making smart plays, getting the ball to the open guy. The ball moves faster than your feet. Syracuse does a great job getting it out of their defensive end, move the ball up the field quickly, down low to my man Basil, who buries one. Austin Jones stays in. We're working against Nate Garlow again, the sophomore from right here in Syracuse, went to Marcellus High School. And Garlow went a little bit too quickly, so Albany will start out this possession. Under a minute to play. The Q's up by eight. Schwab has it. Schwab around the cage. Another save for Syracuse. Strang again. Patterson draws a double. Kicks it out. McComer, the freshman, against Fusco. Feeble shot. Strang has it. All game long, though, Nanakoke has just not put much pressure on this Syracuse defense. Been doing too much standing around in the middle of the field. I would have liked to see him go and pick for some of his offensive players and get the ball in his stick more often. He didn't do that. I'm not sure that would have been the difference. Syracuse, big time win here in the Dome. After a letdown in week one against Colgate, a 12-9 defeat, Syracuse makes a statement in week two handling the Albany Great Danes, the number 15 team in the country, 13 to five, the final score. Bradley Voigt, the star, with six goals by himself. Just a reminder, our next Syracuse men's lacrosse telecast on ACC Network Extra will be this Sunday, February 24th, as Army travels to the Dome to face the Orange. Game time is 4 p.m. So for Ryan Powell, I'm Noah Eagle saying so long from the Carrier Dome, where the final score from the, today's game was 13 to five Syracuse over Albany. To watch this game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watch ESPN. Dot com. That's all we've got from the Loud House. We'll go back to studio with Drew Carter. Drew, take it away. All right, Noah, thanks so much. Great job, as always, from the Carrier Dome. And what a game for the Syracuse faithful today as the Orange bounce back in a big way from that season opening loss against Colgate last week. Emphatic style for the Cues today, 13-5 to over Albany, nearly reversing the script from last year when the Great Danes beat the Orange 15-3 to at the Dome. I'm Drew Carter, back alongside former Jacksonville standout Ashton Hyron, former Atlantic Sun Player of the Year. Ashton, that is a completely different Syracuse team we saw today. The Syracuse team we saw tonight had confidence and composure. They weren't scrappy at all. They secured their loose balls, and they just looked like around the net they knew what they were doing, and they knew they had the good, a good game plan. Now, every aspect of Syracuse was pretty impressive today, but which one impressed you the most? Definitely their attack and their ball movement. Their men around the outside, they, they were strategic, they were very particular, and their outside shooting was on point. Now, the defense was pretty good, too. We just saw number one in purple and gold. That's Dehoga Nantico, who's one of the better players in the country. He was almost entirely neutralized, especially in that second half. How'd they do it? Physicality. Um, they came in knowing that Nantico was going to be the number one star player, and they, they scripted their game plan for that. And physicality really ruled him out today. I mean, that's success because not a lot of teams in the country last year could keep him out of the game. And we know he rolled into the Dome today with the utmost confidence. Not mm -hmm. only was he the America East Rookie of the Year last season, not only was he the number one recruit in the country last year, he tweeted today, woke up feeling dangerous. And Syracuse, I think they were feeling pretty dangerous too. Do you think that might have given them a little extra motivation? That definitely gave him th them more motivation. But also, I mean, he came in being dangerous. That first five to ten minutes of the game, he was an offensive threat and he did come out dangerously with a lot of power and a lot of you know enthusiasm in his game but they soon figured out how to stop him now Syracuse we know they came out with intensity today fair to say that they probably got hammered pretty hard in practice by John Desco because this is a guy who does not lose back-to-back -back games very often in fact he's only lost two games in a row 12 times in more than 20 years so what do you think practice was like for Syracuse this week after that Colgate loss practice would have been pretty brutal coach John Desco said they had a lot of things to work on that's how nicely he put it. But, you know, they they wanted to work on ground balls. They wanted to work on clears. And clears and ground balls were one thing that they cleaned up and they really made the improvement on today. Yeah, that's something we heard Drake Porter, the, the goalie, making just a second career start 
today. He talked about that during the week. He said there were a lot of bright spots to build on from that Colgate loss for Syracuse, but it was all about cleaning up those loose ends, like the clears, like turning the ball over. And it was just because they were early in the season that maybe they were struggling with those smaller type things that are kind of easier to work on. Ash, and having played the game, do you think that's accurate, that early in the season you're going to struggle with that and then you'll tighten it up down the stretch? Yeah, you've got to get out your first game jitters. So the first game is really to, you know, knuckle out all those things that, you know, you do in the first game. And that's what I think they did. And I think they, from that first game, they took them into practice. They they knuckled them out and, you know, they really brought them into the second game. And Syracuse responds in a big way, 13-5, the win over Albany today. Biggest reason why, biggest contributor is a guy who outscored Albany by himself. It is Brad Voigt with six goals, not only his first career hat trick, but his first career double hat trick. And Syracuse's senior joins us now. Bradley, first of all, congrats on your first hat trick. What's it like when you're in a zone like that? Uh, I mean, just keep on shooting the ball, I guess. Uh... Um, keep on moving around, um, looking for open spots and looking for my teammates and just keep on moving off ball. Now, Albany coming into the Dome, one of the best teams in the country last year. We know when they came to the Dome last season, it wasn't close. They beat you guys pretty bad. How much was that in the back of your mind coming into today? What happened last year when they came? Yeah, uh, even more so last uh, last week's game against Colgate was in the back of our heads more than last year's game against Albany. Um, we had a great week of practice all around, um, a lot more effort. Um, I think we came out with a lot more intensity and played a lot smarter right from the beginning. Um, ever since, uh, you know, last week's loss against Colgate, we've been taking a lot of heat and, uh, you know, we, we put our heart in it this week at practice and we came out and played smart and played with our hearts today. So that's why Bradley, this is your fourth year playing for John Desco, a guy who very rarely loses back to back games. What about him in practice and on game day makes his team so good at responding? Um, he's a lot more vocal after losses. Uh, you know, we watch film a lot and he's, uh, him and coach Tiny and coach Rogers do a great job with, uh, watching film and telling us, uh, the spots to be and, um, telling us uh, how the other team is going to play. So, um, you know, a lot more focus went in this week uh, after a loss, and obviously uh, it worked out well. All right, Bradley, last thing here. You said your team took a lot of feet after losing that season yeah. over the Colgate. I'm yeah. not sure a lot of people expected you guys to beat Albany today, to be frank. Yeah, that's right. What yeah. did you just hey, tell the country? On, yeah, keep on doubting us. Uh, you know, uh, it puts a little chip on our shoulder and uh, makes us work a lot harder during the weeks and uh, come out uh, more prepared on game day. That's Bradley Voigt. Six goals today. Pretty good response from yep. the senior and company. Congrats, man. Thank Enjoy you. Have a, good, yeah, have a good day.